Communications are managed through audio control panels. Let's look at the audio control panels. The audio control panels have receiver controls and microphone select switches. Receivers are manually controlled by pushing the associated receiver control to turn them on or off and rotating them to adjust the volume. Turn on the receiver for the right VHF radio. You can monitor as many receivers as you desire by simply pressing the desired receiver control. A filter selector for the navigation radios is used to select voice, station identification, or both voice and identification of the navigation radios. To transmit on any of the VHF, HF, or interphone systems, the associated microphone switch must first be selected. Push the left VHF microphone switch to select this radio. The light in the selected microphone select switch illuminates. Notice how the previously selected microphone select switch is no longer selected. Only one can be selected at a time. Pushing a microphone select switch automatically selects the associated receiver control. The interphone position of the mic interphone switch permits transmission on the flight interphone system. When you key the mic position of the mic interphone switch, transmission on the system selected by the microphone selector switches occurs. The selected transmitter is also keyed with the mic interphone switch on the control wheel or the handheld microphone. Along with your headsets, the flight deck speaker can be used to listen to the selected receivers. The knob in the center of the speaker controls the speaker's volume. Now let's look at VHF and HF communications. VHF and HF radios are tuned using radio tuning panels. To use a radio tuning panel, the panel must be switched on with the radio tuning panel off switch. Push the radio tuning panel off switch to turn on this radio tuning panel. Each panel can tune three VHF radios and two HF radios. A radio selection indicator illuminates showing which radio is currently being tuned by this radio tuning panel. Let's call ground control on 121.9 using the left VHF radio. First, the frequency is set in the standby frequency window by rotating the frequency selectors. Set the frequency with the frequency selectors. Notice how the frequency selectors only set the frequency in the standby frequency window. Now transfer this frequency to the active frequency window. Use the frequency transfer switch. The left radio tuning panel is normally associated with the left VHF and HF radios and the right radio tuning panel is normally associated with the right VHF and HF radios. The center radio tuning panel is normally associated with the center VHF radio. Use the right radio tuning panel to tune VHF frequency 121.6 in the left VHF radio.
The left offside tuning light illuminates, indicating that the radio normally tuned with this panel is being tuned by another radio tuning panel. The right offside tuning light illuminates, indicating this radio tuning panel is being used to tune a radio not normally associated with this panel. The process for tuning an HF radio is similar. Select one of the HF radio tuning switches. Select the frequency. Then transfer the frequency to the active frequency window. Like all HF radios, don't forget to key the transmitter to tune the antenna. There is a two-part interphone communications system. The system includes a flight interphone system, a cabin service interphone system. In addition to the interphone systems, there is also a passenger address system. The flight interphone system is primarily used to communicate with ground personnel during pre-flight, engine start, and pushback. With the flight interphone microphone select switch selected, transmitting and receiving is the same as described earlier in this lesson. You can also transmit on the flight interphone system when the transmitter select switch is not selected by selecting the interphone position on the microphone interphone switch on the control wheel. However, the receiver volume control must be manually selected in order to receive. If the ground crew is not monitoring the flight interphone system, the pilot can alert them with a call signal. To do this, push the ground call switch on the pilot's call panel. An alert horn in the nose wheel well sounds when calling the ground crew. Push the ground call switch now. The ground crew can also call the pilots. These are the flight deck indications when the ground crew is calling. The high chime sounds and the ground call light illuminates for 30 seconds unless the light is reset. Selecting the flight microphone select switch resets the ground call light and removes the associated ICAST message. The cabin interphone system is used for communications between the flight deck and the cabin. There are two ways to initiate communications with the cabin. You can use the audio control panel or the pilot call panel on the overhead panel to initiate calls. To call a flight attendant using the audio control panel, first you connect the flight and cabin interphone systems. Next, select the flight attendant station you want to contact. When the attendant answers, any of these can be used to talk with the flight attendant. If you want to contact all stations, select the alert switch. This will sound the high-low chime three times and flash the pink call light at all flight attendant stations.
You can also use the telephone type handset at the end of the aisle stand. When using the handset, simply lift the receiver off the hook, select the desired station, and talk. Only push the passenger address push to talk switch when making a PA announcement. The reset button resets the handset for another call. These are the indications when the cabin crew is calling you. Pushing the cabin interphone transmitter select switch answers the call, extinguishes the call light, and removes the ICAS message the same as with ground crew calls. The service interphone switch allows independent operation of the service and cabin interphone systems. With the service interphone switch on, all the service interphone stations are connected to the cabin interphone system. During normal operation, the switch is left in the off position to reduce background noise. Now let's look at the passenger address system. PA in use is removed when the system is available for PA announcements. PA announcements are made with the handset by pushing the PA switch. And then holding the push to talk switch on the handset while transmitting. PA announcements override all pre-recorded announcements and entertainment outputs. Selecting PA on the audio control panel and keying any microphone transmits on the PA system, regardless of handset selections. A selective calling or cell call decoder permits the calling of a selected airplane over normal VHF and HF frequencies. When the airplane has a properly encoded call on any of the VHF or HF radios, the communications alert message cell call displays. And a chime sounds. To answer the cell call and clear the enunciations, press the corresponding transmitter selector switch or by transmitting on the corresponding radio. The cockpit voice recorder is located on the overhead panel. The cockpit voice recorder system continuously records flight deck area conversations and transmissions made through the audio control panels. Audio is recorded from the first engine start until five minutes after the last engine shutdown. Pushing the erase switch will erase all four voice recorder channels. The erase switch only functions on the ground with the parking brake set. If the voice recorder switch is placed to on, pre-flight recordings will be made. 